Commissioner Brown? Here. Shalette? Pickens? Here. Smith? Present. Velasquez? Present. Vice Chairman Fuller? Present. Chairman Vieira? We have a quorum. Uh, Commissioner Pickens, would you please lead us in the flag salute? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have a uh, presentation today on AB 109. I don't see Mr. DeRico here. Are we going to be going forward with that? or? Yes, I believe Captain Nelson is presenting. Captain today. Nelson? Great. You're up. Uh, it, it, members of the uh, commission, I have a very brief uh, set of stats on the AB 109 uh, as of a couple of days ago. I wasn't quite sure what uh, you had asked uh, of Mr. DeRico at the last meeting because I wasn't here. But uh, I can tell you that as of uh, October 7th, um, f right at 400 um, PSPs have been released uh, into the Lancaster Station area. Um, that's uh, as compared to about 313 for the Palmdale Station area. So we've got a, a little over 700 uh, currently uh, released into the two station areas. Um, of all of the P uh, PSPs and PRCS releases under uh, LA County, um, LASD is uh, tasked with the supervision of about 3,000. Um, that's roughly a quarter of all of the uh, of these are released. Um, they've done some operations. Um, most of which were not up here, um, but I believe they have one scheduled for tomorrow, uh, which is basically a compliance check. Our current PSP teams, uh, for the most part, are um, rather than doing proactive um, compliance checks, are actually spending most of their time looking for absconders, um, because that seems to be the number one issue now with the AB 109 releases, is that they just don't report. There's really no uh, uh, motivation for them to do so because uh, they know they're not going back to prison anyway. Um, so that uh, seems to be where we're spending most of our time now is just trying to locate the absconders. Um, I have our most wanted PSP parolees. Uh, all of them are parolees at large that, that failed to report. I, I'm, I'm happy to say that only one of them is actually from the Animal Valley area. Um, however, he has been escaping arrest now for uh, a number of months, um, but we continue to look for him. I'm, I believe he's probably not in the area since we have not located him yet. Um, overall, department-wide, um, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department has arrested uh, six, a little over 6,200 um, folks for various violations, and that's roughly 29% uh, uh, of the arrests made uh, for AB 109 releasees. And I have a breakdown if anybody's interested in exactly where the majority of those occurred. Um, again, uh, the vast majority of the operations have been uh, elsewhere, uh, despite the fact that we seem to have the highest number of releasees in the county uh, for a station area. Um, a part of that is, uh, like I said, because they're, they're spending most of their time looking for absconders and they don't break the team up to do that. So um, with that, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Um, are they getting the flash incarceration once they are? I mean, are they get being put back? Um, <clears throat> they have had some limited success with the flash incarceration, but as you know, it's a very limited uh, tool that isn't much of a uh, motivator for – they know it's going to be a very limited time in jail anyway. Um, so it, it, it really doesn't um, support their following their uh, conditions of release. So the failure to report is, is I mean, it's just a violation. It's not a new crime. Correct. So 
are they getting any time for that? No? Not to my knowledge, okay. no. Any other questions? Thank my my understanding, just real briefly, that uh, there were some uh, modifications made at the state level. I've yet to read them, but um, it sounds as if, and maybe uh, Mr. Morris can weigh in on this as well, um, that they won't even have a search clause um, as they, as the new releases start coming out. Uh, a search condition won't even be a condition of their parole. Um, so we'll really be hamstrung on what, if anything, we can do uh, with the AB 109 releases after that that starts. Not a very cheery report, but thank you for the update. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Any other uh, comments, questions? Okay, this would be the time for public business from the floor. Do we have any comment cards? Speaker cards. Speaker cards. Okay, uh, for the consent calendar, I'm looking for a motion for the approval of minutes September 11, 2013. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Yes, sir. Okay, we have motion and second. Any discussion? Okay, let's vote. And approve unanimously. Thank you. Go to uh, staff presentations, updates, and reports. Uh, Mr. Cobalt, crime statistics. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Fuller. Uh, the measurement period for this. Uh, report is September 1st to the 28th, 2013. Uh, these are basically our statistics here. We were, after the uh, AV fair, we had some residual weeks where things were uh, uh, kind of abnormally high. If you remember the last reporting period, we, we had some uh, uh, weeks that were up in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we can see the last three weeks here kind of settling down and coming back down to a range of normalcy for us. Uh, generally, if we're between about 55 and, and uh, 70 Part 1 crimes, we're in pretty good territory for for the city in order to bring the uh, numbers down. And you can see the last three weeks there for total Part 1 crimes, we're 53, 40, or 64, and 58, which are good numbers. <clears throat> we take a look at our uh, uh, weekly averages. Uh, because of the impact that we normally see associated around the Antelope Valley Fair, uh, we were up uh, with a weekly average of 80 Part 1 crimes per week with a median of 82. During this reporting period, which is in that, that area that's well past it now, we can see we've dropped down to 65.25 Part 1 crimes per, uh, per week on average uh, with a median of 61. Uh, this looks uh, compares uh, the previous or, or our past 12 months to the previous 12 months, and uh, we've had a couple of months of, of over where we were um, the last time. But overall, uh, right now, September to September, September 13th or 2013 to September 2012, we're up 10% from where we were um, uh, in September last year. Uh, our crime rate per 10,000 population from September 2012 to August uh, 2013 is at 271.45, which is up 2.65 points from my report last month. Uh, and again, just for frame of reference, our crime rate at the end of, uh, uh, of 2012 was 279.93, so we're still in pretty good territory. We're almost 10 points below where we were, so that's, that's uh, not bad. Most active reporting districts, uh, 1137 had, had 47, 1135 had 36, uh, 1127 had 33, 1126 had 25, and you can see the bottom two are starting to drop down into fairly low numbers. Just to give you an idea how that lays out on the map, this is 1137, but the majority of the Part 1 crimes you can see in the highest density area within about uh, probably four or five blocks of uh, Avenue J south uh, from about 20th Street East over to uh, Challenger Way. And then you start getting out into the further reaches of the, uh, of the reporting district, and you can see things are pretty, pretty uh, peaceful out there. Um, 1135, <clears throat> which is the mirror of that district to the north of Avenue J, 
Again, you can see the same phenomenon going on about about uh, four or five blocks north of Avenue J from 20th Street East to uh, Challenger Way. 1127 is over on the west side of town, but you can see uh, even though it makes our list, you get off of the uh, Valley Central Way and things drop off pretty quickly. Again, the vast majority of our, of our activity in that area is along Valley Central Way. Kind of goes back to the analysis that we did before. You know, our, our primary areas of concentration for Part 1 crime activities are dr drilling down basically to uh, 10th West and Avenue K, uh, Valley Central Way, uh, basically uh, Lancaster Boulevard up to I, and uh, over to uh, 20th Street East and Avenue J. Uh, those are our primary areas of, of activity, and they, you see them popping up, popping up over and over and over again in here. Eleven twenty-six. Again, you can see the the uh, area of 10th Street West and uh, Avenue K. That's where our highest density is. Then we get a little bit more density up here around Avenue J and 10th Street West. Then, if you get out into the other reaches of the uh, reporting district, things are, are again uh, not bad. Eleven twenty-one. Um, again, some of the same phenomena as I said: Lancaster Boulevard up to uh, up to uh, Avenue I, and from basically Sierra Highway over to 10th Street West. And that's what we see here. Uh, the vast majority of our density is right along Avenue I, from basically uh, Sierra Highway to 10th Street West. And 1122 uh, is the the area that's uh, around Lancaster Boulevard. You can see that's where the highest density is in this area, going uh, a couple blocks each direction, north and south. And uh, uh, that's essentially where it's at. For residents, burglaries, 1137 um, had nine. Uh, 1127 had four, and 1135 also had four. 1159 and 92 each had three. Uh, for larceny, uh, larcenies involving vehicles, the leader was 1137, again was seven. 1127 followed by 1122, 1123, and 1126. Our trends for the past 52 weeks, uh, we only have a few this time that are trending up. We seem to either be leveling off or... or uh, uh, having a few join the uh, downward trend. Rape, again, trended up because we had that one week back in uh, uh, week 29 where we, we hit four in one week. So until that cycles through, we're going to show a, we're gonna show a, uh, uh, a uh, trend up uh, until that hits about uh, midpoint uh, in the uh, year. For assault, you can see that we're well below the baseline. The baseline for assault is 15.09 per week. And um, that's up here where the blue line is. You can see even though we're trending, uh, we have a slight upward trend. Um, we're still way below the baseline in that. Our range basically goes from a high of 14, and we haven't hit that since week 20 of 2013. Uh, other than that, we're, we're ranging from between about 12, from about 4 to 12 per week, depending on the week. Take a look at burglary. Uh, basically, that's trending flat. I mean, there might be kind of a slight upward trend there, but but it's it's uh, not really significant, and so we're we're able to call that basically flat, and that's as opposed to the last reporting period where we were trending up. So we're seeing some good headway there. Again, what's nice to see when we look at at things like like graphs like this, it's nice to see the weeks. If you see where my cursor is at right there, where we have a week where we were down to 10 per week, when we see those those weeks coming back, that's going to bring our crime rate down. I mean, we're always going to have weeks where we're going to spike up just a little bit. Those are those are normal because you have new influences in the community that are going out and doing that, and until they're caught or identified and caught, um, they're going to cause a little bit of elevation. But where we really make up the... the um, where we really make up the stats in that area is when you can see us dropping down into low areas like this where we only had, for a specific week, 10 instead of the normal 23 that we have. Those are, those are the weeks that actually have a good impact on our crime rate. 
Same thing with larceny. We're trending flat with larceny now. And again, the positive thing is uh, you can see we've got a few weeks here where we, had, where we were really down in larceny. The, the big point that we want to drive home with regard to, to larceny and to burglary is secure your property. We had, we had some folks working over on the east side, uh, particularly during the last reporting period, that were going into residences after the residences went to sleep, or after the, the, the folks that lived there went to sleep. And they were, they were uh, 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 taking the property and leaving, and the people woke up and found out that they'd been burglarized. It was a pretty consistent pattern over there for a little while. Um, if the windows had been closed and locked on the first floor, uh, chances are those burglaries wouldn't have happened because we weren't seeing a lot like that that were, that were showing signs of forced entry. Same thing goes for automobiles. If we, can, if we can get residents, again, to pay close attention to locking their vehicles, the vast majority of our, our uh, auto, auto larcenies are still people just opening up unlocked cars and taking, taking things from them. Uh, Grand Theft Auto also is trending flat. You can see some pretty consistent uh, um, frequency patterns there, but for the most part, uh, we're, we're still trending way below the blue or the uh, baseline there. And for uh, homicide, uh, we've had uh, homicides in these respective weeks that are showing up. Uh, it looks like there's a flat line there, but the weeks just don't show up if there were no homicides. Uh, but you can see a downward trend there as well. Also trending down is robbery, and that's one that's been a particular focus the last few reporting periods, and it's nice to see that on uh, the downward trend. And uh, arson as well. This is the uh, basically the, the uh, part one crimes that are in included in the data that I presented today. You can see how they lay out across the city and what the most active reporting districts were. This is our spatial trend analysis that shows us specifically what parts of the city crime or, or the part one crimes increased and what parts of the city they decreased. We have our uh, repeat calls for service up here, and there's really not any new entries that uh, that I'm aware of that are that are staggering here. It looks like uh, most of the places that were fighting with the alarms got those under control and they moved out of the uh, out of the uh, four week period. And uh, this is how it lays out across the city when you take a look at it. And our forecast for October is 386 Part 1 crimes. We forecasted 378 during the last reporting period, and we had about 360 this time for about a 95% uh, accuracy rate. And uh, you can see where the uh, areas are that, are that should be most active next reporting period. And again, this, uh, this report is on the, uh, the city website, on the public safety website. Questions? Well, Jim, I got a question. Thank you very much, first of all, for the information. It's always very useful. Um, on the uh, repeat calls report, I see the uh, Lancaster City Park with, uh, with 11 records. Do you know what those consist of? Uh, no, I don't. I, I didn't check that before I came down. But it's not unusual during this time of the year to see some increased activity over there because it's getting to the point that we need to get folks moving along, and, and uh, uh, but I can check that out for you and let you know. Thank you. I just had a question. That one particular week where you mentioned there were four rapes in one week, what time of day was that? What specific I, area? I, I, did, not, uh, I did not print you? that out, but, okay. it, but if you're interested in that, I can, I can certainly get that to you. It, it seems like... Um, just generally speaking, uh, when it comes to that, oftentimes the, our our rapes um, occur between um, uh, acquaintances who don't really know each other, and they end up someplace that they really don't know where they're at. Okay. And and oftentimes that gets to be problematic for the sheriff's department because they don't even have a crime scene, uh, and where they find out about these frequently is at the uh, the emergency room when the victim comes in for treatment. Um, that's generally the way, that, or, or one of the, the most frequent ways that we, we have. The best prevention is for people to go out with us, people that they know, number one, and number two, know where you're going. Um, uh, you know, and when you arrive at some place, if somebody's going to a party, make sure you know the address that you're at and get it recorded somewhere so that, that 
should something bad happen, at least the sheriff's department knows where to go to at least start their investigation. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Thank you again. Uh, we're moving on to arrest statistics, uh, sheriff's department. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. Um, I have two months' worth of statistics I missed last month uh, due to the 9-11 memorial um, uh, ceremony. So I will uh, compare August and September also for your um, information. Um, this is specifically for the top and core team. Um, for part one crimes in the month of August, uh, 13 were reported and in September were eight. So you could tell that there was definitely a decrease there. Also along with part two crimes and warrants, there was also a decrease from 103 to 72. And then the addition of those parolees, also those numbers are consistent with drops. Uh, firearms that were recovered, they had four in August. Um, the team didn't have any in September. Uh, total arrests have also dropped uh, for the month of um, August into the month of September. Uh, this picture right here is specifically an incident where the top court team responded to a call in service where there was a man in front of the house with a um, uh, shotgun, a rifle, and he was running to his house. Um, the informant um, reported it seemed a little unusual for that neighborhood. It was located in the east part of the city. When deputies responded, um, they were able to um, find the sole occupant of the house, which was the gentleman who was actually in the call described, holding the firearm. And it turned out to be um, a location where methamphetamine was sold. He was a, a methamphetamine uh, dealer. And then all this money and all the scales uh, was other evidence that was taken into um, uh, custody. So um, they did a real good job that day, and amongst many other days, for that significant uh, incident. And on the next slide, the top core team is also responsible for um, Crime Stoppers. If you're not familiar with that, it's a... Um, either internet-based or anonymous um, phone line or hotline, if you will, for the public to report any suspicious activity or any belief of crime activity. Um, and whatever information they have, they forward it to the Sheriff's Department. And then um, that information is uh, <coughs> given to the uh, top core team and then distributed depending on what type of suspicious activity or criminal activity is to either specialized units or them themselves will handle it. Um, these are the number of tips in, um, that were reported in for the North Patrol Division. Now, the North Patrol Division for the Sheriff's Department consists of Lancaster Station, Palmdale, um, Santa Clarita, uh, Malibu, Los Hill Station, La Crescenta, and um, uh, I'm sorry, Altadena and Crescenta Valley. And that consists of the entire North Patrol Division. And then year to date is just what Lancaster Station alone. Um, uh, numbers statistics so of the 295 that tips that were reported through the crime stoppers 111 of them were just solely in Lancaster station 53 arrests for all six of those stations that I, I told you earlier 23 of them were from Lancaster station um, again this is all through this anonymous um, system Weapons recovered, five for the whole North Patrol Division. Lancaster Station had all five of those for the entire North area. Dr property and drugs that were seized, um, $980,000 worth. Lancaster Station did 550000 of that, uh, almost a million dollars worth of property and drugs that were seized. So um, very, and this is all year to date, uh, calendar year to date. So extremely impressed with uh, their work efforts uh, thus far. And, Obviously, we do a lot of the workload for the North Division, as you can tell. Um, the next slide, the Landcap team. Um, felony arrests for the month of August, they had 41 and 33 for September. Misdemeanor arrests were consistent from month to month. Parolees arrests were also uh, pretty much consistent. Uh, they did have a drop in firearms from uh, 3 to 1. Um, however, they did have a significant growth as amount of illegal narcotics that were seized off the streets of more than uh, almost more than four thousand dollars difference. Um, next slide, please. Also, the Landcap team was also responsible for the month of August in um, taking down this meth lab. I'm sorry, not meth lab, marijuana grow, which was in a uh, trailer park, and uh, they received information that um, 
This was a father and son team in a trailer park that were reported selling marijuana to uh, juveniles within the trailer park. After further investigation, it did determine that there was marijuana gro growing there, and they made it a, a pretty significant arrest with um, bringing in a close about um, seven or eight plants and then several other small plants. So it was a pretty good bust for them also. Burglary suppression team for statistics comparing uh, felony arrest, 12, month of August, September, they had 19. Warrants, uh, four and six. Search warrants, they did one each month. Um, parolees arrested, there was a jump in uh, parolees from three to six. Ramey warrants were about the same, just a little bit of drop, but the significance was the amount of property that was recovered from the month of August through September. Um, that's pretty indicative of how much activity they had for investigations in the month of August, and then it would then would fell into September of a lot of the burglaries that they were able to solve and retrieving a lot of the property. So, uh, very good month as far as uh, crimes that were solved in regarding burglaries for the burglary team. And then um, narcotics team. Um, what I have in this column is for the month of August compared to the month of September. So for felony arrest for the whole patrol station, patrol station related to narcotics, they had felony arrest of 93 for the month of August and 103 in the month of September. The narcotics crew had nine in September, I'm sorry, no, in the August and then nine in September. And you can see that there was a significant, uh, there was pretty consistent from month to month for, for methamphetamine, but marijuana was really the big um, increase as far as for the, what the narcotics team had done from the month of August to 13,000 uh, grams in the month of September. So uh, they had several, uh, of these um, warrants that they did um, produce a lot of grows. And then um, just something I had planned for last month. Obviously, we weren't here last month, so always, always remember that. Uh, any questions regarding the statistics arrest? All right. Marijuana was a big uh, item that we had for the last couple months. So, and Vice Mayor, you had a question? I do. Can you give us an update on the streets of Lancaster? Oh, yes, sir. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, the weekend of the streets of Lancaster, obviously we had a lot of people. It was very, um, uh, we didn't have any incidents to report as far as criminal activity. It was very well attended. Um, yeah, a good family event. And uh, the Lancaster, we had a guns and hoses race where sheriff's deputies from Lancaster Station competed with uh, Los Angeles County firefighters. Um, it was a uh, tough fought race, to say the least, but uh, the sheriff's deputies uh, prevailed and got first place as a team, as well as the fastest uh, driver was also a deputy sheriff. And they were recognized last night at the city council meeting, given a very nice trophy. Unfortunately, the fire department was not present. Um, we did want to at least get a handshake for that, but uh, they weren't able to do that. I'm sure there was something very significant that they were busy doing. Is there a rematch plan for next year? Every year, yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> did any of our sheriffs crash? Uh, not intentionally, sir. It was more, it's still being investigated by the traffic <laughs> detail unit. Um, they still have to take some um, measurements to confirm that and speed analysis. <laughs> I'm sure we'll hear more about that with the California Highway Patrol report here in a moment. Oh, we sure will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right. Any other questions, comments? Thank you. Uh, I do have a quick question. Yes, what is there a certain number that you would call? Because I've actually had questions regarding the anonymous tip line. Um, yes. Oh, we put it everywhere uh, all the time. You can go online at one eight uh, www um, crimestoppers com, and for the life of me, it just I'll give it to you right now. Um, www.crimestoppers.com is always uh, available. And then I figure I'd remember it because I see it every time, every Thursday on the Channel 3 News. And Crime Stoppers is also available at 1 800 222 8477. Thank you. No problem. Commissioner, there's also a link on every. If you go to crimemapping.com for the city of Lancaster and you click on any crime, there's a link on there that will take you to the crime or, or to uh, their web page so that if you have a crime about that or any other crime or a tip about that or any other crime, you can, you can report it that way as well. 
Thank you. So, and, and then I want to emphasize, that's what the public's given us. They've given us right. a lot of great information, mm -hmm. very, very useful information that we've been receiving also. Thank you. Thank you. So now we get to hear more about the streets of Lancaster, the ongoing investigation. I'll turn it over to you, California Highway Patrol. You know, it's funny. I didn't hear about that traffic accident. <laughs> I'll have to send somebody out there to investigate after the fact. Because it wasn't an accident, it was an assault. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's with the Sheriff's Department now, okay. Was Mike driving? Mike, were you driving? No, I was not, ma'am. All right. <laughs> really? Okay, we'll talk afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so looking at our stats for September, uh, we had a total of uh, two fatal traffic collisions. Unfortunately, we had a total of five victims. So I'm sure everyone's familiar with the quadruple fatal that we had um, in the Palmdale area. Um, Year-to-date fatals, we have 18 so far. Um, with injury collisions, we have 35 for the month. Uh, we're down by 5, which is great, from August. DUI arrests, 51, uh, down by 9 from August. Total arrests, uh, 1,773, and we're down by 86 from August. Uh, motor services 564 for the month, and we're down by 26 from August. Um, today, October 9th, is walk to school day. So we're urging people, especially with the inclement weather, to make sure that they watch out for pedestrians. We should hopefully have a little bit more than we normally do with this uh, program. Uh, we've had questions about California Amber Alert. It is still up and running. We are not dependent upon the federal government. And I guess because a lot of people complain about that, the, the uh, feds brought their Amber Alert back online Monday afternoon as well. And uh, a final reminder for our recruitment, online applications 912 through 914. And that's uh, www.chp.ca.gov, and then just go to the recruitment tab. And that's all I have. I think any questions? Comments? Sure. <clears throat> no? All right. Thank you. The uh, district attorney office update. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, yesterday, I had celebrated six months here in the Antelope Valley. And during that time, we've made significant improvement in several areas. Uh, for example, we have shown progress, um, well, pretty much in all areas. First of all, in reaching out to the public and also with the courthouse, we've improved our relationship between the district attorney's office and the bench, as well as with several community groups. We have improved our efficiency at the courthouse, and we have also increased the percentage of cases where we obtain guilty verdicts when we go to trial. We've increased that by almost 10 percent in less than six months. We've also implemented uh, policies to help the community and all of the residents of the Antelope Valley. Uh, we implemented a policy on residential burglaries to discourage them by requiring a state prison commitment on every residential burglary unless I, I approve otherwise. And on graffiti cases, what we had found in speaking with uh, members of both uh, the political structure in Palmdale and Lancaster is that graffiti was costing uh, over $500,000 a year in removal and covering up fees. So we implemented a new policy regarding that where everyone who is convicted of graffiti, whether a misdemeanor or a felony, must uh, be sentenced to county jail, uh, unless it's uh, to an extent that they go to state prison. So we've made a great deal of progress. Um, I'm happy to report that. I'm disappointed to report that I'm being transferred. No. Uh, Tuesday will be my last day. Uh, Steve Franklin, who is the former head deputy here, returns from military duty and he'll be starting on Wednesday. So I want to thank everyone. I've had a, a wonderful experience here. I actually asked to remain here in the Antelope Valley, but uh, we don't want to punish Mr. Franklin for serving our country, so he gets the spot he wants. Uh, and they're transferring me downtown to uh, work on AB 109 and to deal with all of those problems. So uh, within a month, I'll be an expert on AB 109, I hope. But thank you, everybody. I appreciate uh, all the help that you provided the district attorney's office and to me while I've been here. Uh, well, thank you, and we really appreciate uh, your participation with this commission. Look forward every every month to to hear your reports and also the uh, spirit of teamwork that you bring uh, to the commission. And uh, you're going to be sorely missed, and we wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. But thank you for the time you were here. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Okay. Uh, Mr. Dorico is not here, so we're going to uh, move past the. Uh... Oh, okay. Here we go. 
Welcome. Commission, Vice Chair. My name is Anthony Perez. I am part of the public safety team assigned under uh, Mr. Dorico. Obviously, in his absence, he has asked us today to come out in and uh, introduce ourselves one at a time and our basic responsibilities uh, under the public safety umbrella. Again, my name is Anthony Perez. I've been with the city since 2007. I'm a 14-year veteran of the United States Air Force Security Forces. I've been on multiple deployments. Prior to that, I was also a federal police officer for uh, NASA stationed at uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I'm also a homegrown boy. Um, I'm the eighth of nine children, so I'm heavily invested uh, in this city and seeing its success through. So I don't know if anybody else can say that they've been here for 44 years. Um, my family has been here quite literally since the turn of the century. So it's, uh, it's a, a nice thing for me to be able to come back into the community after my deployments and see the progress that we're making and making sure that it's safe for uh, not only everybody here but the children as well. So with my duties, what basically I do, I also have a partner back or just to my right here. This is uh, uh, Scott O'Connor. Um, we assigned, uh, we, we take in phone calls that are basic complaints. Uh, we do not have the 1-800-CRIME-STOPPERS uh, anonymous tip line. However, we do uh, field phone calls every single day from people who are concerned about a house or a group of kids or anything that they might suspect is criminal activity. And uh, essentially we operate um, not in so much a gray area, but we handle issues that are a gray area. They're a little bit more than the code enforcement can do, but yet they're not crim, uh, uh, criminal uh, or crime, anything that's being committed as a crime. So what we'll do is go out there and it most likely will be a uh, quality of life issue to where we'll go into the, the and speak to the, the residents or the tenants of the house and say, hey, look, what you guys are doing is bad. You need to stop. And once we get into our investigation, if we are, can determine that there's uh, an actual crime going on with that, I don't know what that is. Am I three minutes up? <laughs> uh, what, what we'll end up doing is we'll do a complete workup on the property and or business or anybody that we, uh, we determine that, hey, this is a, an issue. Um, we'll do everything that we can and, and forward all that information on to the top or core deputies or the um, uh, Captain Nelson's group. And uh, we'll work in conjunction with that to, to get a resolution done. Nine's out, nine times out of ten, it will come up with uh, some sort of crime, drugs, weapons, uh, gang activity. And uh, we usually reap the benefits of the, of the praise of the, the, uh, the, the residents around that area saying, thank you very much. This has been going on for far too long, and, and we chalked it up as another success. Another thing we do also is uh, we, we are assigned to um, kind of like an overwatch or a basic security type thing when we go to the events. Uh, Deputy Rui has also brought up the streets of Lancaster. Yeah, if you didn't see one of us out there, if you guys attended, uh, we were out there in our shirts, and we walked the streets. We handled uh, the issues as they popped up, you know, where it kind of freed up the, the deputies or the assigned deputies to go do um, more important things. We're able to put out little fires here and there. You'll also see us at the Poppy Festival. you see us at the upcoming event at Boulevard. Um, you'll see how I'm dressed in my street clothes today, and that's how you'll always see me. Um, it allows us a little bit of urban camouflage. We can go out, we can mingle among the people to where we're not standing out, and that might hinder our investigation where people might uh, think that, oh, I'm not going to talk to you guys because... Um, People will see me talking to somebody in uniform. So if you do see me on the street, please feel free to approach me. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have or any concerns. If you have a um, residence or somebody comes to you in your position saying, hey, we got this house over here, we have this business, what can you do to help us? Please approach us with that. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you for the presentation. Um, Lee, were you going to ask a question? Yeah, just what, what are your hours? My hours, quite honestly, are 24-7. My phone is always on. Um, it's not uncommon for me to get a phone call from Mr. Dorico or some of the counterparts or even some of the sheriff's deputies saying, hey, we know you're looking for this house. We're over at this house. This is what we got going on. I'm here from 7.30 in the morning to 5.30 in the afternoon. Okay. So, uh, you're a non-armed unit? That's correct. I am not armed. Okay. So, Thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to... Um, uh, Scott O'Connor, and then we'll introduce uh, some of the rest of the public safety team so they can tell you what their duties and assigned responsibilities well, are. Well, before, before you go, you, you made the statement that you didn't know if anybody could beat your 44 years uh, in the Valley, and unfortunately there are a number of us here today who can. Uh, but the big question is, what high school did you go to? Um, actually, I started at Paraclete, and I finished my uh, high school at um, Annal Valley High School. Okay, so, so elope. That's good. Glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> he got expelled from Paraclete. No. <laughs> My name is Scott O'Connor, and I work with Anthony. I'm his partner. I worked for the South Pasadena Police Department for 15 years. 
I was a reserve and I was also the trainer in the 911 center there and the jail. Um, in 2007, I uh, lateraled as a reserve to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department where I work for Captain Nelson now. And I also uh, came to the city of Lancaster as a code enforcement officer. Uh, a year ago, Mr. DeRico um, had us come upstairs to public safety to become public safety specialists. I do all the same things Anthony does, the events and everything, and one thing that we do that he did not mention is we do the restitution hearings for the graffiti for the city or any other damage caused by a criminal act. So we have to go to court and we have to represent the city and try and um, get some of the money back that the city's put out to repair the damage. So that is one more of our collateral duties. We also organize um, you know, concerns citizens have, we organize events for uh, taking care of um, things such as the pedestrians that are jaywalking on Avenue I. We'll get with traffic over at the sheriffs and see if we can get something going on that. Um, we do the transient sweeps of the camps. We do the, uh, um, the uh, business watch. We help the public safety officers who run business watch with the transients that are uh, soliciting at the businesses. and. Uh, we just try to be a, um, a liaison between the special teams and the city. Are there any questions? Questions, comments? Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in and all the all your hard work. We really appreciate it. And I think Amy is next. Oh, okay, great. Good morning. My name is Amy Vasquez. I think I've met you guys before. Um, my primary function with the City of Lancaster's Public Safety Office is case management. Um, I currently manage all the graffiti restitution cases and get them prepared for both Tony and Scott to go to court and testify on our behalf. Lee and I are currently working with the juvenile judges as it pertains to the graffiti restitution and the city's cost model. Um, I'm actively managing and pursuing restitution owed to the city for over 300 cases. The majority of those cases being graffiti vandalism. Some of them are um, traffic accidents where city property was damaged and we are trying to collect restitution because most times they don't have um, car insurance. And that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have more? Is there, are, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Good morning, members of the Commission, Vice Chair. Uh, my name is Jennifer Prisco. Again, I've also stood in front of you and, and spoken a few times. Uh, I've been with the city since 2005. Uh, started out as a part-timer with Parks and Rec and uh, went over to public safety where I was a community service officer at a Lancaster station for several years. Uh, about a year and a half ago, Lee brought me over here. My primary function is parking enforcement. Um, I do oversee our two parking enforcement officers, uh, take complaints and deal with anything, you know, in the field that, that they may have going on. Uh, currently, uh, as of yesterday, I have been asked to participate in the city's Safe Routes to School master plan process. Uh, that is the creating a plan to make routes safer at all of our 29 public schools. And uh, as that plan progresses, I will be working with the schools for the traffic plans. I don't currently have any information as I was just assigned yesterday, but I look forward to updating the commission as that progresses. Um, as of yesterday, I was also asked to handle the Domestic Violence Awareness Press Conference. So uh, uh, everybody on the commission should have received a uh, calendar invite to attend from Anita Williams. It will be held next Wednesday, October 16th uh, at 10 a.m. in front of the Michael Antonovich Courthouse. Uh, let's see here. Please wear purple to support Domestic Violence Awareness Day, if possible. And in an effort to keep the program running, it is vital for the Valley Oasis to raise funds so that there are two. So that I'm sorry. So there are two ways you can help promote and assist in this effort, if you wish. Uh, on Saturday, the 19th, Valley Oasis is going to be doing their Ride to End Violence Rev. Uh, and they are also going to have a car show, vendors, music, a car raffle. They're going to be giving away a 2001 Honda Civic, I believe, with a custom paint job. And uh, those tickets are $25 for the raffle. And then if any of you ride or would like to participate in the Rev Ride, uh, registration 
Any time before next Saturday is $20. The day of is $25 to register. The ride starts at 8 a.m. at Crazy Autos on Avenue I. They ride around the valley and end at AV Harley-Davidson, where, is, where the main event will take place as far as the car show, the vendors, the music, and so forth. That event goes from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. The raffle for the car will be held at 2 p.m. Uh, let's see here. And then I also sit on the Unite Committee. And I had the uh, honor of heading up the Literacy Festival that took place um, on September 21st at Mariposa Elementary. And um, we had a total of 10 volunteers for that and four Girl Scouts from local troops. We also had performers from Eastside High School String Orchestra that actually came out and played for the children that were there. We had about 70 children plus all of their parents and siblings. Um, the string orchestra was amazing and they were, they were uh, nice enough to answer questions for the children who wanted to actually learn how to play and become part of high school uh, orchestra teams as they got older. Uh, the Literacy Festival was geared towards children um, actually making their own books and uh, making their own stories to promote literacy and literature in children and to show them that they had the talents to be able to do such a thing. Um, so we set up about 10 different booths ranging, ranging in all arts and crafts. We had a word bin. Uh, they were able to go through, make their book, make their pictures, paint, uh, all kinds of stuff. It was, it was an amazing event. And then at the end, we were able to provide the children with a new quality book from Scholastic that they got to choose. So thank you very much for your time. Any questions? No? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I said thank you. Oh, thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Tracy Stewart. Um, I've been with the City of Lancaster since 2006. Um, I was hired as a community service officer. I worked at the Lancaster Sheriff's Station alongside the deputies until February of this year when uh, Mr. DeRico brought me over. My primary functions are Neighborhood Watch and Business Watch, our business improvement group. Um, actually, Jennifer and myself held a neighborhood watch meeting last night with Mr. Hearns and residents over at the Linda Verde uh, community home. And that was very good. It was very um, well recepted. Um, I'm not going to hold you guys up. So, our next business improvement group meetings for the 10th Street West and Avenue K business district will be on Wednesday, October 30th. Uh, from 1030 to 1130 at the Lancaster City Park in the Stanley Kleiner building. And the Valley Central Way Group will meet at the PEC or the uh, Pioneer Entertainment uh, Center on, also on Wednesday, October 30th uh, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And that's it for me. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, my name is Amory Mercer, and I have the privilege to update you on Youth Court. Um, Jim gave you all the statistics last month or the month before, so I'm going to give you the fun numbers, the fun facts. One case of water and two packs of cookies, and then Amy said make them the good kinds. Oh, that's our September shopping list for the completion ceremony, which went well. The September completion ceremony had 27 cases that completed. We had 10 um, show up today and they wanted to range from being an engineer all the way to my youngest and my littlest one who wants to be a basketball star when he grows up. We also have two more that graduated since then. We also have some other numbers that are really ecstatic and I'm ecstatic to um, tell you guys that we have eight new city volunteers. We have four interns that are now up and running. They're completing cases. In fact, they should be completing their first set of cases by next week or the week after that. We have four new social work field instructors. There's, they supervise the interns in their schooling and their functions regarding how they're going to become a social worker in the future. We also have one new judge. We're also looking for more new judges if you may want to come back up here sometime to volunteer. Um, in addition to the one new judge that we have, we have three returning interns that help with the data, 
that do admin work and translate. And if anybody knows of any translators who wish to become a city volunteer, we would greatly appreciate that because I don't speak Spanish and nor any other language, so we're trying to communicate to many cases and many parents to explain why their child had received a citation. And this brings me to my final number, me, one happy city of Lancaster employee who is thankful that our program is expanding and is growing because of everybody who's getting involved and more people are being reached out to the community and we have many more resources online for the kid children. And that's it. Questions? Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> well, we had quite the group. Thank you for all coming today and sharing with us. Really appreciate that. This is the time that we talk about uh, public business from the floor, non-agendized items. Do we have any speaker cards? No speaker cards. No speaker cards. Then we go to commissioner comments. One thing that I'd like to uh, to say is we, we are very fortunate in the city of Lancaster to have a very active nonprofit group, the Anlo Valley Sheriff Boosters, who provide uh, much needed assistance to our sheriff's department in purchase of things that are needed by them but not within their budget. And uh, they just had, I believe, a very successful fundraiser. Uh, Vice Mayor, would you like to talk about that? Yes, the uh, entire community got together and uh, we raised a little over $97,000 at our golf tournament. Congratulations. So it'll be good. And the sheriff's department is taking advantage of that. In a good way, right? <laughs> very good way. Very good way. I'd like to also point out that uh, we're having a Fallen Heroes ride uh, this Sunday, the 13th, at uh, AV Harley Davidson. It consists of the uh, uh, Sheriff's Department, the CHP, the Fire Department, uh, the Forest Service, and the California uh, Correctional Department uh, in memory of all of our fallen heroes. And it's a, actually a fundraiser to raise money uh, for the families uh, and their needs. So. If everyone could come out to that, we'd appreciate it. Well, thank you for letting us know about that. Any other comments? All right. With that, then, uh, we are adjourned to our next regular meeting on Wednesday, November 13th at 10 o'clock a.m.